is an I have two. We have two realities. I have two. First, I'm going to be 72 years young. I'm still very handsome. These are my two realities. And therefore, whenever I'm doing an in-person presentation to all the women in the room, what do I say? So you watch out because this very good-looking ambassador of India has showed up over here. We are going to look at where our world is likely to be in the next three years. We are at the beginning of 2023 by the end of 2025. When I was in school, uh, Ms. Chaudhary, we were told that there were two eras in human history, BC before the Christian era, and then there was AD um, after the death of the Lord Anno Domini. But now we have three. We have BC, which is before COVID. We have DC, which is during COVID. We are living through that. And we'll have AC, which is after COVID. I don't know when that is going to come. Question for all the members of the Dignity Foundation to ask themselves, ask their children, ask their grandchildren. Who developed Europe, Japan, USA, Canada, Australia, South Korea, Singapore, et cetera, et cetera? Was it extraterrestrials who came down from Mars? Was it aliens from the moon? Was it creatures from the ocean? Or the people of those countries themselves? And you'll all say that it was people of those countries themselves. And I then pose a counter question. So what's wrong with us? I'm not being funny. I'm not being facetious. When we travel overseas, we do the best. We had 25 of the world's largest companies today, Indian National. We were joker, some fellow called Sadhu or Sant or Rishi or something like that. He runs the United States. He doesn't run it quite well, but he's sitting somewhere in the, in, in the prime minister's house in the United Kingdom. We have so many presidents, prime ministers running around everywhere. And now in the um, disunited states, not disunited, it's called the United States, we're soon likely to have a person of Indian origin as the president. So what goes wrong with us? <laughs> Sons and daughters of India, ladies and gentlemen, members of the Dignity Foundation, the three prerequisites for development, and I have served in 13 countries, visited over 100. These are, in that order, self-confidence, self-esteem, self-reliance. That means Atman Vishwas, Atman Samman, Atman Nirbharta. I'm not talking of the Nirbharta, the Atman Nirbhar Bharat that Narendra Modi promotes, even though I work for him. But as soon as we get that self-confidence, self-esteem, self-reliance, we are there. And when someone doesn't want you to rise, sir, this is classical colonialism. They'll shatter your self-confidence. They'll break your self-esteem. They'll never allow you to become self-reliant. But now, almost 76 years after we were created as an independent entity, recreated, uh, we, we, we have existed forever, but we came back, we came into our own as an independent country. That other character who keeps fighting with me was born then in a cesarean operation. That's why he calls himself Moth Eaton. Well, we've reached these levels of confidence, esteem, and self-reliance. We are there, sons and daughters of India and beyond. Take a look at this map of India. You'll tell me, but Ambassador, this has fallen on its side. Yes, it's deliberate. Jammu and Kashmir, therefore, becomes the West, and the Northeast, which I dearly love, becomes the crown jewel of India at the North. Ladies and gentlemen, why should I accept the projection of the world done 450 years ago by some stupid Dutchman. I can hear music on the thing. Someone will have to mute themselves. I can, no. I can hear some sound coming in, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. No, still there. Mr. Audrey, uh, sir, I'm going to mute everybody and I would request you to unmute yourself. That way it will become better for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now, Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Mal uh, Mr. Ramesh Malhotra, I can see you. Raise your hand. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, sir, you are audible. All right. Now, take a look at this map. So, the question I was posing was, why are we fixated on a Western perspective on India? Sons and daughters of India look at India from an Indian perspective. You see how the South becomes the East, Jammu and Kashmir becomes the West, Gujarat, etc. becomes the South, and then the Northeast becomes the North. This is what we are trying to do. Look at India from an Indian perspective. Nobody understands India better than the people of India. I have done Independence Day commentaries from the Red Fort 
30 years in a row. I started when I was 20, when I was in college. At that time, I think Mrs. Indira Gandhi was speaking. I've heard all these characters speak from the Red Fort. We have to do this. We have to do that. We'll achieve this. We'll achieve that. And they all go back, have tea, and forget about everything. And then we have a tea seller who stands on the ramparts of the Red Fort last year, 2022, 15th of August. And he says, I'm giving you a target to be a developed country by 2047. Sons and daughters of India, that is our project. I will not be alive. For me, it's a vision. For my children, it's a mission. People who come to visit India, my friends, ambassadors from other countries, they say, it seems you guys have never built infrastructure before because you are on one of the craziest binges in human history. Roads, railways, airports, ports. We are building one kilometer of highway every 15 minutes. I've just come from a meeting with uh, General V.K. Singh, our minister. He was telling us the way we are going, we order 470 commercial aircraft, the USA, UK, France. Do you know their leaders started dancing the Bhangra and they all called Narendra Modi to congratulate him. I mean, they said, thank you for creating jobs in our economies. Happy birthday, sir. India, India is creating jobs in Western economies. <laughs> the world is going crazy. The CEO of McKinsey and Company, you've heard of this. He said in September last year, this is not India's decade. It is India's century. Do you know sons and daughters of India? I don't know how many of you were born in 1947. I was manufactured four years after independence. Our first trillion dollars GDP, a trillion is 12 zeros. The first trillion in US dollars GDP came in 60 years. The second came in 10 years. The third came in five years. The fourth came in two and a half years. And the fifth that we are heading to will come in two years. We are moving faster than the one day Bharat Express. These are not my figures. These are figures from the IMF, the World Bank, and Niti Ayo. You can check them out. We are on a roll. Now, officially, our GDP today is 3.5 trillion, but we've already exceeded 4 trillion. We've overtaken Germany. The figures will come out in July. 3.5 or 4 trillion dollars today, trillion has 12 zeros. Two thirds is div driven by domestic demand. Sons and daughters of India, unlike China, which was an export domestic, uh, dependent economy, we are consuming within the country. And by 2047, in 24 years from now, we will be a 35 to 40 trillion dollar economy. Our per capita income today is 2200 US dollars per capita. By 20, 20, uh, 2047, it will be 20,000 US dollars. You don't believe me? Check out the websites, check out the projections, you'll see. Our exports are $660 billion per year. By 2047, it'll be eight trillion dollars per year. It'll be 13 times the figure that we have now, and then foreign direct investment, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not going to spend more time on this. The total amount of foreign direct investment in India since independence, the total amount foreign direct investment is about 1 trillion. Trillion has 12 zeros. Over half of this has come in the last seven years. I repeat, over half of this foreign direct investment has come in the last seven years from over 160 countries in 60 sectors. Capital, sir, sons and daughters, ladies and gentlemen, is a coward. Capital is scared and capital is greedy. What does capital want? Money. He wants security. He wants safety. And he wants to be able to multiply. The world trusts India. That's why capital is rushing to it. <laughs> So when you buy medicine, and most of us go off to the pharmacy to get some medicine, the first thing we look at is date of manufacture, and then we look very carefully at the date of expiry. 1945, we created a global governance architecture. Its expiry date went out 32 years ago after the Soviet Union collapsed, but it's still continuing. My buddy, the German foreign minister, Hans Dietrich Genscher, who died some years ago, uh, may he go wherever he has to, he says the Western world, as virtually everyone alive today has known it, will perish before our eyes. So we are seeing it die. The old order is dying. The new one is struggling to be born. At each G20 meeting, 
Others ask for India's guidance. They say, India, tell us, how do we deal with this? All eyes are on our leadership as our planet. And forgive me, uh, I'm going to use a very tough street-level American expression. Our planet is up shit creek without a paddle, which means we are stuck in a mess, in a swamp. We have a boat, but we don't have a paddle. But we will find a way forward because India believes we are one world, one family, and we have one future. Do you know what's the number one ailment in the UK and Japan? It's loneliness leading to depression. We are bubbling with self-confidence and new energy. The United Kingdom says they have 9 million lonely people in the country and they're training youngsters to be companions. I think Mr. Tata is starting something similar in India. 9 million lonely people, many of them rich widows. When they said they were training young people, I decided to send my photograph to them because they are rich widows. Well, they saw my photograph and they responded, yes, we are lonely, but we're not that lonely. That's meant to be funny. Deloitte and Goldman Sachs, you've heard of them. What do they tell us? That the millennials and Gen Z, our children, sir, our children, madam, born between 1985 and 2003, are the most optimistic and positive, and they will shape one of the world's most compelling stories. I'm not saying all this. This is Deloitte and Goldman Sachs. They don't work with us. 2021, when the virus hit us, we did not know what to do. We stumbled. We were unprepared. Sir, I used to spend 28 hours out of every 24 trying to get somebody remdesivir, trying to get somebody hospital room, oxygen cylinder, what have you. The world mocked us. Today, many people come up to me and say, you should have done this, you should have done that. I was part of the core group. Well, happy birthday. Why didn't you tell us then? Was there a zip on your mouth? But we showed our resilience. Prime Minister was busy contesting elections in Bengal. He came back, assumed charge. We did not have a single maker of personal protective equipment when the virus hit us. But then my mother, her name is India, she called and we had 600 manufacturers within three months. All of you have heard this expression, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. We modify that in India. When the going gets toughest, the Indians get going. Digital India, the way we are transforming the world. You know, we have 115 unicorns. Unicorn is a company with a turnover of uh, $1 billion, with capital valuation of $1 billion, billion as nine zero. We are producing one unicorn every week. We are going mad. The way we are moving, we are racing ahead. There's burning dynamism, ambition in our workforce. Stanford economist, I studied there, Nobel laureate Spence, Michael Spence says, India is the outstanding performer now. You've all heard of a character called Chanakya 2,400 years ago. He said, when the right action is not taken at the right time, then time itself will cause that action to fail. And you've heard of a character called Victor Hugo. When I was studying at the Sorbonne, we read all about him, the French ideologue. And he wrote 170 years ago, no power on earth can stop an idea whose time has come. रुत बदली है जैसे रुख बदला हो जैसे बढ़ती निराशा का कोहरा छटा हो जैसे भारत की अब नई पहचान This book has been written by an American diplomat her name is Ali Sahara she's quoted me in it how India is making its place in the world the book's title is our time has come and you know sir where this book is a best seller Ms Chaudhary it's a best seller in a country called Pakistan India's time has come Chanakya also said there is no friendship without self-interest. Yani, swarth ke bina dosti nahi hoti. So what is our self-interest in that of the world? Five areas. Sons and daughters of India, our brave new world wants what India has to offer. If anybody tells you there's a sixth area, don't believe him or her. First is healthcare. Second, climate stability. Third, recovery and economic development through free and open seas. Debt relief food, energy, security, etc., management of new technologies, elimination of terrorism. These are the five areas. Health is our number one priority. Let me, I don't want to frighten you, but as a member of the core group, I can tell you the Chinese virus was the biggest threat to the survival of the human race ever. And if we had not contained it, there would be no, no more human beings. But the people who found the solution was doctors and scientists from India. China sent its visiting card to 200 countries. It said virus. 
we also sent our visiting card to 200 countries. It said vaccine. Some nations use drones to carry drugs and so on. We use them to carry medicines to remote parts of the country to save lives. We have this thing called Ayush Ayushman Bharat. 500 million people are covered by it. I was in Rishikesh recently. They told me how from the All India Institute of Medical Sciences, they used a, a drone to carry within 28 minutes medicine to a fellow who was dying. It would have taken 18 hours by road. He survived. Even when we were struggling desperately, sons and daughters of India, we shared our limited vaccines with over 100 nations. The West hoarded them. Questions were asked. I was criticized in parliament. Why are you sharing India's desperately needed vaccines with other countries. What did that? You remember a fellow called McDonald Trump? Not McDonald Trump. His name was, I think, Donald Trump. Sorry, I call him McDonald Trump. President of the United States. He said USA will never forget India's kindness. Hate him, like him, love him, detest him. He was the constitutionally mandated president of the United States. We'll never forget India's kindness. Burj Khalifa in Dubai. I was there. I was there. And it was lit with India's national colors saying, Stay strong, India. And everywhere I went, people shook my hand and said, we love you, India. Hundreds of our sons and daughters sacrificed themselves. Doctors, nurses, ambulance drivers, ward boys, they sacrificed themselves so that I could live, so that we could live. They were fighting the virus. Sir, 240 crore vaccinations in 24 months, first time in human history. First nasal vaccine in the world. We released it in September of 2022. We had a success rate in the trials of 82%. The Chinese also got something similar. Their success rate was 2% because they put garbage inside their vials. All that matters to them is money. And to protect the poorest people from the shock of the virus, we have been giving free food to 800 million people. The second big challenge is climate change, which can destroy human civilization. Climate-related disasters have tripled in the last 30 years. Europe faces the worst drought in 500 years. Half of Europe has no water. And they are telling these people, please bathe only once in two weeks. I don't go there because they stink. We have never damaged our planet. We worship trees and plants and animals and rivers and mountains. Ms. Chaudhary, we call the Ganga Mother River, Mother Ganga. We call the earth Mother Earth, Dharti Ma. We worship mountains, animals. We worship the monkey in the form of Hanuman. How can we damage the environment? There is a chap called Elon Musk. He said publicly, India has the most eco-friendly civilization in human history. The third thing will be recovery and development through free and open seas. We will ensure this. The Chinese chap goes around saying, the Indian Ocean belongs to me. We said, how come? He said, well, my grandfather's 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 grandfather died in the Indian Ocean. It's mine. I said, Tiger, my grandfather's 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 grandfather died in Beijing, so China belongs to me. Don't you mess around in the Indian Ocean. The second most powerful Navy in the world after the US is India, and we will smash you. We will pull your entrails out. Based on weaponry, technology, training, etc., not my figures, data from Global Firepower Index and Credit Suisse, most powerful military in the world, USA, they don't know how to fight, they run away from Afghanistan, spend a lot of money. Second, used to be Russia. I don't know what will happen after Ukraine. The third is India, not China. And then terrorism, which diverts our attention. You've all heard of Islamic terrorism, Al-Qaeda, Boko Haram, Islamic State, all this nonsense. We talked about a comprehensive convention against international terrorism in 1996, still being discussed. Sons and daughters of India, I was in Srinagar not too long ago. Believe me, we have killed terrorism in the Northeast, where I go frequently, and Kashmir. People want to learn from us. How did we do it? And in our new world, hyper technology will drive everything. You call it artificial intelligence. I call it engineered intelligence, machine learning, et cetera, et cetera. Now, my daughter who lives in the United States sent me a message saying, Dad, you've grown old. I said, Rubbish, your dad has grown old, not I. Well, anyway, she said, I'm sending you a telephone since you use this old Nokia business. So three years ago, she sent me a telephone made by this fruit company. Uh, the fruit company is called uh, Apple. So she sent me this phone and she said, Dad, there's a woman who lives there called Siri. So if you forget where you are, you can ask Siri and she'll tell you where you are. So you can't hear me, but I have the phone right in my hand and I'm going to ask Siri and I'll read out and tell you what she says. Hey, Siri, 
where am I? She says, you are in New Delhi, India. Very smart woman. I'm going to trap her now. Hey, Siri, what's my wife's name? Do you know what she's printed out and typed out as a message? She says, which wife? Sons and daughters of India, 45 years. I have only one wife. I swear to you. What does this woman know? I'm going to throw away this wretched fruit company's phone. Please buy made in India phones, not made in the US. Who is then going to ensure India's growth? Our human capital. Sons and daughters of India, your grandchildren, your children are much quicker with new technology than we are. We are the youngest country in the world. We will be for the next 30 years. Have you heard of a chap called Bill Gates? I'm sure you have. We call, I call him Bill Lubai. And he says, study one country right now. Things are really exploding there. And innovation is phenomenal. He talks of India. Of course, I wanted to ask him when he said this. I said, Bill Lubai, I, con I consider him from the Punjab. Bill Lubai, your name is Gates, but you make windows, you ask. What's the, what's the connection between the two? What is man's most valuable possession? The Yakshas Yudhishthir in the Mahabharat when Yudhishthir's four brothers are lying senseless because they do not answer the question before drinking water from the pond. And Yudhishthir says, education. 10,000 years ago, sons and daughters of India, we talked of education when the white people were running around naked in the jungles, screaming, hoo, 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 hoo. There were 500 universities and colleges when I was made in India. Today, we have 50,000. I have 1.5 million schools. Now, listen to this figure. The population of the United States is 330 million. I have 340 million students. India. <laughs> One out of three Japanese is above 60 years. One out of four Europeans. One out of six Chinese. One out of 12 Indians. My teacher at the Sorbonne, God rest his soul, Alfred Soviet, predicted that Europe would become an old continent, old people living in old houses, discussing old ideas. The Pope called it an elderly and haggard continent. Take a look at the median age. Median age is not average age. Median age means half the population is below, half is above. Miss Chopra. India's median age is 29. Half of all Indians, 65 crore Indians like me, are less than 29. And half, like you, are just about a little more than 29 years away. That's our median age. Japan is the oldest country in the world. Their median age is 49. Half of all Japanese are less than 49. Half are more than 49 because they've forgotten how to make babies. Last year, they made less than 800,000, less than 8 lakh babies in Japan. They've forgotten. We have the technology, we'll teach them. I told their prime minister, I said, we have more babies in the nation's capital than you do in New Delhi, than you do in all of Japan. We know how to do it. This was not always the case. Our humiliation, brain drain, the 50s, 60s, 1960s, we fought a war, 65. You might remember, the rains failed in 66. We had the Mizoram insurgency in 66. For the first time, the Indian Air Force bombed our own people. We, Mrs. Gandhi, I had the privilege of working with her, went to the United States when our agriculture collapsed, no rains. She begged for food. And the New York Times wrote, the new Indian leader has come begging. You don't deal with an Indian leader like that. But the Americans have no sense of diplomacy or being polite. Then she came back and she told her principal secretary, my guru in the Foreign Service, P. and Aksar, India will never beg for food again. Sons and daughters of India. From a country that imported 9 and 11 million tons of wheat, in 66, 67, we are the second largest importer of food in the world. In 66, we were told, don't eat on Mondays. I don't know how many of you remember this. 52 days in 1966. I have, I have slept. Again, there is some disturbance. I have slept hungry for 52 days in 1966. My mother used to tell me in 1966, gosh. Can you hear me? Miss um, Chopra, raise your hand if you can. Can you hear me? You're Ms. audible, Mark? sir. Yeah, thank you. So we, we went through a very difficult time. And as I was mentioning, that when our agriculture collapsed, we were told not to eat on Mondays. I have slept hungry. 52 days in 1966. Mark, ATT, son, why don't you eat? I said, no, mother. 
India is in trouble. I will not. And then our recent journey. Since 2003, Sons and Daughters of India, 20 years, we don't accept foreign aid from anyone. We assist over 150 countries. 2004, tsunami, first responders. Maldives, drinking water crisis, 2014, first responders. 2015, relief for Nepal within 15 minutes. 2023, earthquakes in Turkey and Syria. We were the first responders. You know what our total private wealth in India is? Our total private wealth is $8.2 trillion. A trillion has 12 zeros. Six largest in the world. And we spend it on looking better. Most of it. Number one spending. We have 650,000, six and a half lakh towns and villages in India. We have 15 million, one and a half crore beauty parlors. So all of our people including I, run off to beauty parlors. At the height of the Kargil conflict, this Indian villager, true story ma'am, 24-year-old chap, asked how he could register for the army. Both his legs were cut off below the knees. I'm talking of the 1999 conflict. He was lame in both legs. When his handicap was pointed out, this is what he said. I have come to fight the enemy. I've not come to run away from the enemy. Who can stop a country that has children like <laughs> Earthquake in Sikkim, 2011. I don't know how many of you remember. The road from Siliguri to Gangtok, Gangtok is the capital of Sikkim, was broken in 300 places. This is one of the places where it was broken. You see the Tisa River on the right. The then Prime Minister asked, I took this picture. I'd gone with the Doordarshan team to film rescue and rehabilitation. Then Prime Minister said, which country has the best mountain road technology in the world? Austria did. We asked them. They said three months to mobilize, three months to repair the road broken in 300 places. Who's going to wait six months and pay a lot of money before you feed your people regularly? We can't use helicopters all the time. The prime minister said, ask the border roads organization. You've all heard of BRO, border roads. I did. I called their director general. He said, I'm going to send my survey teams and we'll let you know how much time it'll take. And as I stand, before, I sit before you, I appear before you, as God is my witness, 19 hours later, he called. He said, tell the prime minister, the road is open. 19 hours later, we lost 22 of our sons working in this very, very difficult conditions. I went to the home of a sick whose child war kuch nahi had died. And I told her, jo desh ko hai, war kuch nahi those who want the country, love the country, they don't love anything else. From childhood, I have wondered what defines us as Indians. I met this Sikkimese mother. I said, government will give you compensation. Military will, border roads will. I wrote her a personal check. And then she said to me, she said, you're a special advisor. One of my sons died. I have a younger son, 22, university graduate. Get him a job. 2011 wasn't difficult. I said, the moment I go back to Delhi, I'll speak to all my buddies. We'll get him a job. She said, I didn't ask for a private sector job. My elder son died for India. Let my younger son join the border roads. When the time comes, let him die for India. As the water rushed into my eyes, it still does when I think of that. I haven't met her in 11 years. I held her hands in mine and I said to her in Hindi, Ma, tujhe salam. And sons and daughters of India, then I understood. We are not Indians because we live in India. We are Indians because India lives in us. We call her mother, Mother India. We reach out to bring her our children and others home from Lebanon, Libya, Yemen, South Sudan, Ukraine. Many in Ukraine last year got onto our aircraft waving our flag. They were not even Indian, saying, Jai Hind, Jai Hind. We, we brought them all back because the mother doesn't discriminate. Sons and daughters of India, for too long have others written India's destiny. Never, never again. We made mistakes, not anymore. Now we have made a commitment. I have made a commitment. The children of India have made a commitment. We will write our future ourselves. Nobody else will write it for us. Oh, we think bigger. We can do it. The highest stadium where the cricket match is taking place in Ahmedabad, the biggest statue, highest railway bridge in the world. Remittances from non-resident Indians broke all records last year. Foreign direct investment broke. We are making rockets and military planes for the private sector, the most lethal helicopters, missiles in the world. We are producing fastest bank accounts, two per second, fastest toilet construction, one toilet every two seconds, largest day, data consumption. Do you know we do 40 crore digital transactions every day, mainly the unified payments interface, UPI. 67 countries want us to teach them how to use UPI. Three people in India join the internet every second. 
As an Indian, have faith and confidence. Sons and daughters of India, cynicism. Tell your children, cynicism does not empower, it paralyzes you. Somebody asked the fakir, how do I change the world? He said, be the change you want to see. Change yourself first. His name was Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi. It is natural to be scared of new things, but dar ke aage jeet hai. Victory lies beyond fear. We are not gods, but we are Indians. That's the next best thing. In the brave new world, India will provide leadership in all areas of major concern to human beings. We are truly a Vishwagul. We are incredible. We are 76 years. We are in puberty. We are chafing, churning, changing. How are we confident that India can play its destined role? Because India has dignified children like you. This is my tombstone in Kargil, a place I love dearly. It simply says Deepak Vora, Indian. It's at the feet of a statue of the Lord Buddha. I'm a non-practicing Buddhist. And written there is, as you can see, scattered in the dust, silent I remain. When India's bugle calls, I will rise again. This is at a place called Apati, not far from Tiger Hill. You've all heard the name. I had an adopted son. His father had died for India. I took this kid on when he was two years, financed everything, put him through the National Defense Academy. He was a captain in the Indian Army. He died in Kharkiv, my child. It hurts, sir. It hurts very much. Had he been alive, he would have been 44 today. I loved him dearly. And the last thing he told his CEO before this kid went to the great heavens. He said, tell my father, I did my duty. That is India. You know, forget about yoga resolution adopted by the UN, largest majority in its history, the loans we are giving to Russia. We are smoking terrorists out of their holes in Pakistan. We've smashed China's face. We've killed the virus. We are the voice of the global South. So many of the people I serve in Africa, you mentioned Guinea-Bissau, you mentioned South Sudan, you mentioned Lesotho, they turn around to me and say, you know, we have selected India as our natural partner. And I respond, yeah, he had right shot. 115 years ago, Sri Aurobindo said, India was rising to share the eternal light entrusted to her. India has always existed for humanity, not for herself. We have been a Vishnu Guru always. Swami Vivekananda said, India is awakening. All those who were sleeping for the last 35 minutes, please wake up now. Do you know why we should wake up? Because... Aray, abhi to party shuru hui hai. Aray, abhi to party shuru hui hai. Aray, abhi to party shuru hui hai. I believe that Aray, even God part... is Indian. This is the best time to be alive in India. But to be young is very heaven. Thank you so much, dignitarians. Thank you so much, sons and daughters of India, for the time that you have given to listen to me. I'm deeply touched. I'm privileged. I'm honored. Thank you. Very nice. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. If there are any questions, I'm quite sure that uh, that uh, Miss Archana Chaudhary will be happy to answer them. What a very beautiful presentation. We are proud of you. Very Thank proud. you, sir. Thank you, sir. I get my energy from the man I serve. Sir, you heard his I mean, name. This is, this is the I best. Sir, this is the best. Sir, this is the best presentation I have heard, ever heard from a true patriot ambassador of India. A true Thank Indian. you very much, sir. Thank you. And, uh, sir, I have got a question for you. Yes, sir. You mentioned everything, everything good about the, the present India. So, yeah. and there are so many uh, people who are opposing India's progress and they are all against one single man who is responsible for all these things. And what is your appreciation uh, uh, about all these uh, 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 opposition people and how uh, will they ever uh, turn to be good 
and then they be real, and become the real patriots you know sir you asked me a very difficult question it's it's uh, a question of attitude of mindset we had become so used to the chalta hai let it carry on attitude in india when i was a child when i was in school and college we were always told write something about india oh, we are a poor nation we don't have enough to eat we have this we have that we are an agricultural society that's all that i learned those were the essays i wrote even when i got admission to a top level american university you know as a young man they said you know write something about your country and this is what i was told to write today it's different sir today when i travel in africa they stop me on the street and say i said yes and they said well, thank you for helping africa sir when we gave these medicines uh, i think it was called remdesivir and paracetamol to the united states in 2021 i was there sir i was living in new york i was staying there with our, our child our son and our daughter and i would be stopped on the streets people would think that i was an indian and they would shake my hand and say thank you india this is the new india these people who are stuck in a time warp whose mindset are not changing they will be swept into the dustbin of history sir india is racing ahead let me just put it to you like this sir a tiger sir, doesn't turn around india is racing sir sir no other doesn't... let me complete sir, sir. Uh, okay, a tiger okay. doesn't turn around when the little dog barks many okay. times people have said to me ambassador deepak when you speak with such passion about india there are some who don't like it so please hide from the coming storm i respond sir i am the storm okay 